Once again, autumn is here and it has ushered in with it feelings of nostalgia and longing for simpler times gone by. It's October and this month has already shown me that changes are an inevitable part of life as the leaves are beginning to change color and drop and the sunlight is diminishing more with each day. It's a season of reflection for sure and I find myself reminiscing to earlier autumns in my life, though trying not to get lost in comparisons and dwell on what was. You see, dear friends, this year's autumn looks a bit different, and things in my life have just been, well, a bit upside down. Recently, I've been feeling a bit overwhelmed, not sure how to proceed with my vlogs, not sure how to tell you what's been going on lately, and uncertain of how to open up. Of course, each day holds opportunities that can be celebrated, even in the most stressful of times. And there's so much to be thankful for that I try my best to stay positive. But the differences, the nuances, and the changes in my life this autumn are ones that I'm still navigating through and learning to accept and appreciate. things will get easier, but in the meantime, I will take one day at a time, romanticizing and cherishing the moments that present themselves. Good morning. I'm just out here at the lake. I just arrived not long ago and now I'm just in this beautiful location under the trees beside the lake. The birds are out in full swing today. I just witnessed something so remarkable and it was several very large flocks of birds going overhead. They are just flying through just I guess they're heading further south for the winter or they have a destination in mind because that was, I just kind of stood there filming all these birds and they were just chattering away. And it's funny how when they come through, they'll kind of rest on branches for a second and then continue their destination or wherever they're headed. I just really wanted to come on here and have a heart to heart with you and just touch base. It's been a while since I talked to all of you and I can really feel it in my heart that um, I've neglected you, my YouTube community, and that I've just kind of put this on the back burner. And I guess I want to just open up and explain to you why and um, hopefully just, you know, have a fresh start and just say 
it's never too late to just jump back in. So what am I talking about? Before we go any further, <laughs> I have my coffee and I was gonna pour some because it's quite chilly out here, which I love. It's such a cool, crisp autumn day. And that was another reason why I wanted to come out first thing. Not only is it quiet and peaceful and there's just no one around, there's no buzzing, there's no stirring of activity, well, except for nature. <laughs> um, it's just a beautiful autumn day and I'm very inspired by this cool weather. So back in August, August 23rd exactly, David had to go into the hospital for open heart surgery. And this is not something that completely floored us or took us by surprise. He's had a genetic heart condition since he's been in his 20s and he's been having it monitored and checked every year. He went for his routine checkups back in the spring and they told him that they saw something that was not looking good and that more than likely he would need to have a surgery to repair his heart valve and see about, um, you know, getting that finalized, you know, once and for all getting that taken care of. And so all summer we were kind of in limbo, just wondering, was he going to have an appointment? Were they going to schedule him to have surgery? We didn't know if it was just going to just take place uh, one day unbeknownst to us. So after the summer went by, kind of being in limbo, wondering when this is going to happen, we got an appointment scheduled in August. And we both had peace about it because we were very confident in our surgeon and our doctor. It was gonna be a pretty extensive procedure though, open heart, which was not something that David wanted to do, of course. And I can honestly say that our faith is really what we leaned into during that time. A lot of prayer. I had a, a lot of friends and family, so many loved ones just jumped in like prayer warriors to get us through this time. I think that really helped give us comfort and peace as well. Of course, I was, I don't want to say I was scared. I didn't really have apprehension either. Like I said, I had peace about it, but there's always that little bit of unknown and you're just so ready for it to be over with and so that you can get the good news that everything went smoothly. More than anything, I so badly wished I could have just taken that from him so that he did not have to go through that. Um, he knew he didn't go through it alone, but at the same time, I didn't want him to have to go through it at all. We were in the hospital in Jacksonville for about five days, just him and I. Um, the care team, the nursing staff, they were all wonderful. Uh, they all just showered him with love and care. Um, so many of them had excellent bedside manners, which what I mean by that is they just, um, you could talk to them, you could ask them questions, you, you felt like they were family almost and it's funny how close you get to the care team and you get to know a lot of them by name and you rely on them so much for the care that they're giving giving and also for the answers that they're providing and there's always so many questions when you're in a hospital environment like that David was such a sport though he was such a good patient so strong um, he was ahead of the curve the whole time. The doctors and the nurses, they kept saying that he's doing so well, you know, he's doing better than most patients would be doing at this time. He, you know, he was ahead of the curve. So that was very encouraging to hear. I think he was motivated to get through that situation quickly and he was just strong. Um, when he went in for his surgery, they allowed me to wait in this beautiful, little sitting room, this waiting room, which was so special. And it had gorgeous stained glass windows. It was peaceful, low lighting. And I just really enjoyed um, just that whole atmosphere. They definitely, they're definitely service minded and they're compassionate and it's just a very ethical hospital. So I can boast about them quite a bit, but that's not <laughs> the purpose of me sitting down with you today. Really just to let you know that David and I, you know, fast forward, we're six weeks into his recovery now. He's doing so well. 
we had some scary moments and just like anything that is challenging that you go through a lot of times you can come out stronger on the other side doing really and good you can really grow from it so I think that him and I both have honestly it's been wonderful him being home these past six weeks he's struggled a little bit with the idea of of not being able to go back to his job right away and and just having to be at home and recover and his recovery process has been so good that um he's getting stronger every day and all of his friends and family they're um, amazed at his progress and i am too you know most of september looked like just david and i home getting through these things together and him recovering and me helping him and whatever way I could a lot of times it was difficult to see him someone I love so much go through pain and discomfort and me feeling helpless as can be but I do what I can do to help him out and he's really expressed to me and to those around us how much he appreciates (laughs) me and I just feel like oh I'm not doing anything I just feel useless sometimes. Both David's parents and my parents live close by and they've been wonderful to help as well. And, you know, friends and our family, they've stopped by and they've provided meals to us in those first couple of weeks and just really stepped up and lent a hand. And um, that was very humbling for me and for David, I'm sure. And I think I really learned a lot about helping others and it just kind of opened my eyes to see how important it is to be a help and to offer help. So in addition to David and I just, you know, being at the house each day and going through recovery mode, um, this autumn has also been different in ways, challenges and things just, you know, falling into our laps. Just have to, at the end of the day, understand that some seasons won't look like what we expect. We'll have to maybe lower our expectations a little bit. My mom had a situation as well and she's like my best friend and I was heartbroken when I heard the news that she fell and broke her arm. Her entire humerus bone was completely broken and it was a very bad break. You know, fast forward now, it's been about three weeks. She's doing quite well. She's recovering good too. She's strong. She's in a sling right now and um, starting therapy. So she's doing a lot better, but at first that was kind of a little bit of a setback. And there's not been a lot that I could do to help her. My other two sisters have greatly stepped up to provide care for her, but I still try to do what I can yet again. I, I try to invest extra time to help her in, in ways that I know really matter. And um, in addition to both my husband and my mom going through these health issues, we had the storm of the century touchdown, Hurricane Helene, straight from hell, as the name suggests, worst hurricane to ever hit our area. And it was just devastating and heartbreaking. The amount of destruction in its wake is just unprecedented. They're still recovering. We are two weeks into the aftermath of that hurricane and there are still people without power. Trees down everywhere. David and I, we were up all night long. It hit um, in the early morning hours. Um, We were up all night long just listening to things hitting the roof and hitting the house and just the wind was just so strong we lost a couple of trees one fell on the side of the house it left so much debris on the roof and all over the yard debris just everywhere and when i came back to visit this park that i love so much i didn't know what type of damage i would find here Um, A lot of trees came down, but they've had crews already come in and cut the trees up into smaller pieces and pile and stack. It's just unreal to see it. Um, David nor I have ever seen a storm do this much damage. So much of our sweet little town is just um, in a deplorable state, but it is just encouraging and inspiring to see all of the linemen that have been out working 
on the power lines, the cable lines, just around the clock, just trying to recover everyone's home. And there's a lot of help hotlines right now that you can reach out to to get help in your yard and to get help around your home if you need it. Uh, we were so blessed and I am going to be forever thankful and grateful to the friends of ours that have stepped up to recover our property and our roof and to come by and they have picked up branches and sticks and they've used chainsaws and they've done so much work to recover our property and it looks so much better it was looking really bad and David can't do anything right now and I can only do so much um, I did use a chainsaw for the first time um, and our chainsaw blade was a bit on the dull side but I, I made it work it took me a while to get through this tree I was going at it and David was um, assisting me on the side and telling me what I should do and making sure I was safe with a hard hat on and safety glasses uh, what did I have to do with that chainsaw I had to cut our way out because a tree where it landed blocked our driveway we weren't going to be able to get out of there we had no way of even contacting Dave's parents in the aftermath of the storm because they had no cell service and we so badly wanted to go check on them and make sure they were okay but we couldn't get out of the driveway so I did some hacking and some sawing and some moving to the best of my ability so that we could drive on out of there so now you know kind of what's been going on with me and with David and where we've been um, yeah it's just not the autumn that I signed up for. I think it's all in how you look at it too though. Uh, you can choose to get really depressed and to get down in the dumps about things or you can look at the positive and just look on the bright side and and realize in retrospect you're still just showered with so many blessings. Even if this autumn doesn't quite look like autumn's gone by we can always dig deep into the memories that we have we can cherish those fond memories sometimes if we don't take pause we get lost in everything that's going on and we we don't appreciate like we should so i've definitely found new appreciation in this season um renewed thankfulness i thank you all from the bottom of my heart from the bottom of my heart for still being here even though i've not been around much taking your time to watch this video i just know that this community is very heartfelt and i just really hope that wherever you are you're romanticizing autumn in every way finding new ways to cherish the warmth that each day brings so I love you, sending all of my warmth and well wishes and praying for blessings on you. Love you guys. Cheers.
Autumn provides the perfect opportunity to reconnect with nature once again. It's a season of warmth and togetherness, a time when we gather around a cozy fire, sharing in stories and laughter. It's a time to appreciate the little things in life, like a walk in the countryside or reading a good book. Autumn is also, as I've stated in my own case, a season of change, and yet so beautifully represents growth also. It's a time to let go of what no longer serves us and to embrace the new opportunities that come our way. It's a time to be grateful for all that we have and to reflect on the blessings in our lives while expressing our thankfulness. So thank you so much for joining us today and sharing a little piece of our life with you. We're looking forward to the future with hope and optimism. But for the present, we will strive to appreciate the beauty around us, to connect with the people we love, and to find comfort in the simple things. Sending our love to you. God bless. Mm -hmm.